Hi, I'm Alan Lowenthal, and welcome to Startup 101. Today, we're going to be talking about what I consider to be the most important legal as well as business issues associated with creating a startup business. First, I'm a corporate lawyer. I can't believe I'm saying this. I've been doing this work for more than 30 years. I actually like my job. And the reason I like it so much, one of the reasons, is that I get to work with many people, many just like you, who are starting up their new business. Today we're going to be talking about a business plan, picking and choosing co-owners, how to actually form a corporation, financing your business, retaining independent contractors and hiring employees, as well as some other issues. One of the most important things you can do right now is spend the time in creating a business plan. It's going to be time well spent. The biggest benefit of a business plan is that it forces you to ask and answer the most important questions for your new business. What exactly is the product or service that you're going to offer? How are you going to finance the business, both short term and long term? How are you going to retain workers or independent contractors? What are the staffing needs going to be, short-term and long-term? These are just some, some of the very important issues that you need to be thinking about and answering before you start your new business. Ownership of the business. It's going to be very simple if you're the only owner. If you're not, and there are many valid reasons for having co-owners, they may be require you may require it for investing purposes but one of the biggest mistakes i see young entrepreneurs make is handing out equity prematurely you need to be very careful about who you hand out equity to the costs in terms of money time distraction is significant prematurely giving out equity to someone you don't know well Know what their work ethic is. Know if you're personally compatible. Know what their skills, business skill sets are. To the extent they have experience, research their business experience carefully. Just like a marriage, getting out of an ownership relationship with another co-owner, again, can be very expensive in many, many different ways. How do I actually form the business? You should consult with an experienced lawyer to determine what's best for you. Should it be an LLC, a limited liability company, or a corporation? For most, most practical purposes, I typically recommend a limited liability company. There are a number of legal reasons for that. And based on your facts and your circumstances, Confer with an attorney, and he or she can help you make that decision. The actual process of forming a legal business entity is rather easy. You typically file a one- or two-page document online. You pay a small filing fee, and you'll receive back within a week or two certified articles. And congratulations, you're a formal legal business at that point in time. It's very important to stress today that you should not begin your business operations until you are a legal business entity. A lot of bad things can happen if you do that. Primarily, uh, creditors can come after you personally, personally. Someone slips and falls on your premises. They can come against you personally. You do not want that for obvious reasons. Once you've received your documents from the state, you're not quite done yet. The next thing you'll do is obtain what's called a federal tax ID number or FEIN or EIN number. It's easy to do. Just go online, look up EIN number or federal tax ID number, and you can obtain that number by filling out a short form and you'll receive the number almost instanta instantaneously. The next thing you'll do is you'll take that federal tax ID number along with the articles that you receive back from your state and you'll go to your local bank and set up a business bank account. The most important thing I can say at this point is that you should not intermix, intermingle uh, your business financial affairs with your personal financial affairs. Do not write a business check for personal items 
A number of bad things can happen between the IRS, creditors, and others once you start doing that. Let's talk about workers. Before you know it, you're going to need help with your business. And the choice will become, do you have an employee relationship uh, that you create or an independent contractor relationship? All things being equal, you definitely will want to have uh, an independent contractor relationship, at least initially, with your workers to the extent you can. Unfortunately, it's not as easy as simply calling them an independent contractor. The states have various factor tests and sliding scale tests that will determine whether the nature of the relationship they have with your company, depending upon many things, including but not limited to uh, their ability to control rather than you, how they get the job done, things like that. But there are other factors too. will determine whether or not they're going to be deemed an independent contractor. Again, discuss this with experienced legal counsel who can advise you on what that relation has to look like for them to be in fact deemed an independent contractor. Most importantly, make sure you put in writing an agreement between you and that employee or that independent contractor. Very important legal considerations need to be made and put in writing in that agreement. They include everything from an obligation to keep matters confidential, trade secrets confidential. Um, it can, they can include restrictive covenants and covenants not to compete, which restrict the employee or the independent contractor from carrying out uh, similar duties for a competitor for a limited amount of time. There are a number of provisions that would go into that agreement protecting your business, not just during the employment or the contract relationship, but even after they leave your business. It's important, again, to consult experienced counsel who can advise you on how to protect your business, both during the employment term or the contract term and after intellectual property. Believe it or not, you have assets even early on in your business. It can be your logo. It can be written documents, written materials that you're putting out on the internet. It can be products that you're designing. Each one of these, depending upon where they are in, in the creation cycle, distribution cycle, constitutes and is intellectual property. Again, consult with experienced legal counsel on if and when it's appropriate to take steps to legally protect those valuable assets. Last, I'd like to mention the team you're going to have and should have. Again, you've heard me say it often, experienced legal counsel. You should have an accountant that you can call on, and you should have an insurance agent that you can review the nature of your business and the associated insurance coverages that you should have. Those are the three, I believe, most important business partners that you should have, identify and have at the outset. That's all for today. In the future, I'm going to be preparing podcasts and webinars on each of the topics we've talked about, but go into far more detail, specific detail on each one. I look forward to talking to you or speaking with you in the future. In the meantime, you can learn more about our firm at lowenthallegal.com or feel free to send me an email at alan at lowenthallegal.com, A-L-A-N at L-O-W-E-N-T-H-A-L-L-E-G-A-L.com or simply call me at 313-618-7447. Thank you. Mm -hmm.